Hey, it's Mark Lanier with your video thought for the day. The book of 1 Samuel in four minutes. Are you ready? Here we go. Imagine a world where ordinary people are called to extraordinary destinies, where shepherds become kings, where faith can topple giants. Welcome to the book of 1 Samuel, a story of unexpected heroes, divine choices, and the birth of a kingdom. Now, three quick things to understand the book of 1 Samuel, which, by the way, is actually in Hebrew, there's only one Samuel. It's in English Bibles. We divide them up into first and second. So four minutes for 1 Samuel or the first half of the Hebrew book of Samuel. Anyway, point one, God does make unexpected choices. Samuel himself is a miraculous birth at the start of the book. His mother can't have children, and she desperately prays to God, and God hears the prayer and gives her Samuel. She weans Samuel, dedicates him back to the Lord, and he is called as a prophet of God. It's Samuel, then, who anoints the first king of Israel, King Saul. He's selected because he's like a head taller than everybody else, and so they think he's a real good-looking guy. Surely, uh, something that everybody would think would make for a good king, except that's seeing things the way humans do. God doesn't see it that way, and Saul doesn't work out to be a good king. He's not faithful to God. And so God calls David as king. Now, David is just a shepherd boy when he's anointed by Samuel and prophesied to be the coming king. Um, Samuel anoints David over his stronger, better-looking, better-developed brothers, because God's looking at the heart, and God chooses the unlikely and seemingly unqualified to fulfill his purposes. Which brings me to my second point. The book of 1 Samuel is a book that speaks to the courage of faith. Samuel is bold in speaking God's truth, even to the king, even when it doesn't seem right, even when he's telling the king, you blew it, you've done it wrong. God's not happy. You won't keep the throne. Um, David, another example of the courage of faith. He faces Goliath at a time where nobody else will face Goliath. We know the story of David and Goliath. Welcome to 1 Samuel. That's where you find it. And then Saul himself has a son who under normal rules you might think would get to be king next. But Jonathan, this son, is so close to King David, or who will be King David, close, so close to David that he sets aside his own ambitions, his own opportunities to be a friend to David. And this loyalty and support and encouraging David um, uh, shows how true support comes from trusting in God, not human strength or even position. Final point. The book of 1 Samuel is big on the consequences of obedience and disobedience. I spoke with you about how Saul was disobedient before the Lord, and it cost him his kingdom. David showed great obedience to God and great patience, and, and he waited for God's timing. And within the framework of that, he becomes Israel's greatest king ever. The contrast in 1 Samuel between Saul's decline and David's rise is a contrast that's rooted in obedience over disobedience. So the book of 1 Samuel, what a read. It challenges us to trust in God's choices, even when they don't make sense to us at all. It calls us to cultivate the courage that comes from faith and to walk in obedience to God's voice. So what are you going to do today? I'd urge you to speak truth, to walk obediently before God, to let God be your guiding star. And that's why I've made this your video thought for the day.